Hello, Nick here. I just wanted to make a little tutorial video on scrolling effects. And the question was, can I add multiple scrolling effects to a single element, such as a text block? So I thought I would just explain how that is working here. If we open up the Square Kicker tools and go to scrolling effects, we will see our scrolling effects toggle here. And as you can see on this timeline, I have a triangle here, and this represents the block that I'm currently on. So in this case, the block is the text block that I'm on. And as you scroll up and down the screen, this is the timeline of where the block is on the screen. Right now in the middle, that's the middle of the screen or the, the center point of where that block is going to be. And of course, the start and the end. So to enable square kicker scrolling effects, first of all, we notice that obviously that block is moving up and down the screen. But if I put this on the first section, obviously I can't go any higher. I can only go lower. So at the moment, this is where my block is currently sitting. So I can't actually see most of the entry animation because right about here, now it's in the center. So if I do anything now to this block on the entry, I'm not gonna really see it. But I can do an X animation, but not necessarily an entry one. So if I head down and just push this to another section somewhere else on my page, I can see that block. So here we go, let's add our first animation and let's just enable that. So right now we have at the start of this timeline, so let's move my block up to the start. At the start of my timeline, when my block gets to here, it's gonna be at minus 50% of its initial position. So as I scroll down the screen, it's gonna to get to the middle, and once it hits the middle, it's gonna be in 100% of its initial position. Now, I can choose to also, if I wanna do something else to this, maybe I want it to grow. So let's click on scale and enable that. So now I've got two animations, the one that's the two that are highlighted yellow. And now if I go back to the start again, it's going to be at 50% of its initial growth size. But when it gets to the middle, that's going to be 100%. So that's how it's going to scroll there. If I wanted to bring it down even further, it's going to be now at the start of the animation, it's going to be at 0%. So pretty much nothing when it's at the start. But as it grows, it's going to get to the middle and become where it should be on the screen. Now, of course, I can apply all the different animations by opening up and clicking. When it's active and enabled, you'll see it's yellow. And of course, it's enabled here. This means now opacity will be 0%. So it will fade in as well as grow and and what else I got and move. Um, I can also do a rotate and flick that on and blur and flick that on and vertical and flick that on. So now I've got all the animations happening at the same time, which is getting some pretty bizarre effects. Now, obviously you can see once it gets to the middle, it's not growing, it's not scaling, it's not doing anything anymore. That's because that's the exit animation. So that's where I go to my exit animation. I want to scroll to the right of my screen on its way out. So I enable that. And now when it gets to the center point to the end, this is the end point. It's going to end at 50% that way, the other direction, when it gets to the end of the scrolling screen, which is right about there. So that's how kind of you can do exit and entry animations. And of course, you can also do scale. And when it goes past that point, it's going to grow bigger. And I can, you can make it 200%. Or if I really get crazy, I can put in a large number like 600%. And so it's going to it gets to the middle and it's going to grow and scale to 600% while it scrolls away. So you can see really quickly, you could do some pretty outrageous stuff. That's the normal timeline. If you want to enable the custom timeline, that's where things get a bit more complex, but rightfully so, because it's the custom timeline. Now, obviously I have my 0% and this 40 and 60% are my center points now. And of course, 100% is my end. So I can see this block is kind of currently at zero, but let's say I wanted to actually start about here, that's when I wanted the anim animation to start. So it's about 12%. So I'm gonna do my horizontal positioning and flick that on. And so now I've got the entry point, which is this position with what's green. It's gonna be at minus 25% to the left. And then when it gets to 40%, that's gonna be at whatever this number is. So at the moment I've got, it's gonna start at minus 25%, but between here and here, it's not doing anything. It's just gonna start to where it should be. And then it puts the, the power of it on and then when it gets to 40 percent of where it should be it's going to go to zero now i can actually make this do something very different i can actually make it when it gets to 40 percent or the center i want it to do something else maybe i want it to bounce back so it's going to go to minus 25 again so now we're going to get this weird bouncing effect so it's going to come up it's going to bounce in oh it actually hasn't moved that's right i need to go the other way so first i need to go let's just do zero again type it in zero zero and then it's actually going to go negative 25 again so now when it gets to um 
12%, it goes up to 40%, and then it pauses for that center item. That's the, the 0%, if you will. And as it leaves, it's going to bounce backwards back to where it should, we know, negative 25%. But I can also have it go plus 25%. And that means it's going to continue to scroll past pause and then scroll forward. But maybe I want to get there faster. I don't want to have to wait till it gets all the way to the end. I want to get right about here. I want to be off the screen and carried on. So now I can have this kind of effect go really fast. And if I want it to go even further, I can say not just 25%, but let's just go right to the edge and just get off the screen. So now it's going to go fast to exit the screen quicker. So that's kind of how you would use scrolling effects and using multiple scrolling items. You can, of course, go into it and add multiple scrolling effects. So you can add blur, opacity, but you have to enable the buttons and carry on. And what you can do is you can actually go to a different device toggle. And in this mode, you can actually assign different values to what you want the scrolling position to be based on mobile. So that concludes kind of using scrolling effects on multiple effects at the same time, as well as having a different animation per screen. Hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.